So the legend goes, if you drop a penny from the top of the Empire State Building, and it hits someone in the head, it could kill them. A relatively sharp piece of metal dropping 450 metres from above and hit me on the head is probably not something I'd want to do. But is this real? Would a penny falling from the top of the Empire State Building hit you? Or is this just a load of old rubbish? So we need to work out how fast a coin dropped from the top of the Empire State Building would be travelling when it hit the ground. Now thankfully there's a really easy equation we can use to work out what this speed is. But all we need to know is the acceleration the coin would be feeling by the Earth's gravity pulling it down towards the ground and the height of the Empire State Building. This is the distance the coin will have to travel. We can use these two values. We find the speed the coin will be traveling when it hits the ground is 200 miles per hour. So to put this into perspective for you, a bullet from a gun can travel around 600 miles per hour. This means our coin will be traveling around one third the speed that a bullet travels as it leaves a gun. This is incredibly quick. So you think the coin can do a lot of damage, right? Well, there's one key difference between a coin and a bullet. The shape of a bullet is designed to be piercing, so it can pierce through things such as skin, so it can do the most damage. Whereas a coin has two very flat sides. What this means is if a coin hits something on the flat side, the entire force of the impact is spread over a large area, so it does much less damage. A lot of tests and experiments have been done, especially one done by the famous Mythbusters, that shown that if a coin fired out of a gun hits you with the flat side, it actually doesn't do a lot of damage. However, there is also the sharp edges on a coin, and if the sharp edge hits you, it can do a lot of damage. So coins can be rather dangerous. Well, actually, there's still one thing that we haven't considered, and it's the most important thing of all, and this is the effect of air resistance. If you've ever skydived or seen a skydiver before, you probably realise you don't keep travelling faster and faster as you fall down towards the Earth. At some point, you reach a maximum speed when you stop accelerating, and this is something called terminal velocity. And all objects that fall through something that isn't a vacuum reach terminal velocity, so any object travelling through air or water, for example. As the object travels through air, the air pressure stops the object from travelling any faster at some point, reaching terminal velocity. In terms of our coin, this air resistance force works against the force of gravity pulling the coin down. So what's the maximum speed, or the terminal velocity, that a coin falling down can reach? Well actually it's only around 25 miles per hour. We compare that to the speed we calculated earlier, with no air resistance, which was 200 miles per hour, this is only one eighth of the speed. This assumes a normal air density resistance. What this means is that alongside some large buildings, you can actually get an upwards air draft, and this would slow the coin down even more. In fact, it may even slow it down so much that it can make the coin float further away from where we initially dropped it. So is a coin travelling at 25 miles an hour going to hurt anyone? No, not really. A lot of people have done experiments of dropping coins from large heights and note it never seems to do much damage to anything it hits. If you consider that humans can throw things around 50 miles per hour, this means we can throw a coin about twice as fast as it will get if we drop it from the top of the Empire State Building. Now, I'm not suggesting you throw coins at someone, but if you did and you hit someone with a coin, they'll probably note that it doesn't hurt that much. So could any object falling from the top of the Empire State Building hurt you? Well, theoretically, some things that are heavier or more aerodynamic could definitely do a lot more damage. A pen, for example, if falling straight down point first, would almost act like an arrow or like a bullet and could do some really serious damage. A bowling ball, on the other hand, is much heavier and could potentially reach much higher speeds, and it would also have a much larger impact when it finally hit. Of course, why you'd have a bowling ball at the top of the Empire State Building, I'm not really sure. Of course, if you drop a coin from the top of the Empire State Building inside a vacuum, then you find that the coin managed to hit the ground at the full theoretical 200 miles per hour and would cause a lot of damage. If you could somehow recreate the entire experiment in a vacuum of space, you'd have a very different result than you do down here on Earth. So unless you build a giant vacuum tube, a coin dropped from the top of the Empire State Building won't kill you. In fact, it will barely hurt. Of course, people don't really like coins being dropped on them, so best not try it for yourself. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to check out the rest of my channel for some great scientific videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave some comments below at the bottom of the video. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys all soon. We often think of the sky being dominated by two objects at different times of the day. During the daytime, we see the sun in the sky, and at nighttime, we see the moon. 
you probably noticed that sometimes you can see the moon out during the daytime. So why is our idea that the moon and the sun are opposites and that we can only see the moon during the nighttime wrong?